This segment it is about three words that we can talk about when we learn about environmental science. And here they are. The first one is about anthropocentrism, second, biocentrism, and the other one is ecocentrism. We're going to look at these three words as we go along in this show. You'll see it will be interesting. It's three different perspectives that we pay attention to. So let's see if we can look at Google Earth with some places we can look into. So I live in the Toronto area. So here is the eastern, uh, is the Google Earth showing uh, the eastern part of Canada. So as you get closer, I'm going to show you here. So here is an area that we call the Algonquin Park. The Algonquin Park is a provincial park that is protected. So where there's no logging, people can go for camping for, to enjoy nature. And it's quite amazing. So you could see there might be a little road at the north here and there's a little road on the south, but nothing more. No logging can happen. So here we have an environment that is untouched and where organisms can live and enjoy themselves. The idea of keeping a large park like this is the idea of ecocentricism. The idea that we are keeping an area where ecosystems can live the way they do best without human uh, interaction to make them grow. Now there's another place. So if we go to Toronto area, so here's the Toronto area right here. So in here, there's about 2.5 million people that live here. The fact that we have humans and we are creating our cities, we are pushing the boundaries where nature is. This is an example of what I call anthropocentrism. So let's see if I can show you the word here. So this one here, anthropocentrism. So if you think of a word you may know, anthropology. Anthropology is the study of how humans live on our planet, the culture, and so on. Anthropocentrism is that when you focus is about the humans. So if you look here, we're going back. So anthropocentrism, you have a place where you have a city, regardless of what's happening with, uh, uh, with the environment is set aside. So here, look at that, the density of how many people live here. Humans go in, they need habitat, they need food, they need uh, occupation in their, um, their ecological niche, for example. So all we have here, the small streams where everything is pushed to those area. Humans will say, well, we are very nice. We're keeping some of the areas here for, uh, for nature. But if you look, there's a golf course right here. There's a golf course right there, golf course. There are golf courses everywhere because humans like to use our environment. So this is an example of what anthropo centrism is all about. Now, there's other, there's the other word I want to use is this one here, biocentricism. Uh, biocentrism, biocentricism. Oh, that's a good question. I feel like I'm doing typos on these. Let's see if I can find the word. So anthropocentrism. It's anthropocentrism. Yeah, that's good. Biocentrism. Okay, I was right. It's important to be precise with vocabulary. So here, if we go back to our Toronto area, now humans in developing the area, we realize that we have to keep some green area. So if I step back a little bit, you can see here that there's a band here that is a bit greener than all the gold all around here. We called it the green belt. And theoretically, the green belt is an area where humans have decided not to get involved with uh, uh, with housing and urban development. So if you look in this part here, this is the moraine. So when we had the last glaciation last, uh, I don't know, last 20,000 years or so, this was the front of the glaciers. It pushed the sediments. And then we have a place where we have nature, we have natural uh, underground water. So it's important because we need to keep a place where animals can be but we can also have water for us. So here, if we think we have the green belt, some places forests are there, but in some ways we also have some farmland as we go along. So here is an example of biocentricism. We know we need to keep some green area because we need 
clean water for humans. We, need, we know that we need to keep a place for animals, insects, flowers, and so on. So here what we're looking into is taking care of that. This is what we call biocentrism. That means that we are focusing, and let's look at the word here. We're looking on the biological aspect of our earth. That means all living organism. So here, it doesn't mean that it's good for the ecosystem. Ecosystem is not the most important part. Humans are the most important part. So I was looking here. So if you look in this example, so we have Toronto here, you go west. So you could see here when we had uh, forest logging happen and all you have are little farmlands. So you could see here. So if I get closer, so you can see the farmland. I can get a bit closer here. So we have the roads. And then usually at the intersection between two lots where farms are, some of the, uh, the trees are not cut and therefore we have little lines of forest. So here, this is all about biocentricism. We say, oh, we have plants, we have farms, we take care of animals, everybody is good here. However, is that what's best for the ecosystems? That is a good question because here we are, we have changed how geography is. Some of you says, well, there's some places where we keep some green places. That is very true. The reason why this place uh, is still green is because it's a swamp. There's no place for us to put infrastructure. So we say, ah, as humans, we're going to keep this area free of infra human infrastructure and therefore we will be there for the organism. However, if you step back a little bit, the only reason why it's there, it's not for human reason. It's not for the ecosystems. It's because humans cannot do much more about that. Now, there's a few other examples of the idea of biocentricism. So here's an example. So this one here is in Canada. That's in Banff. So here you have the Rockies at the back. I have another example, another way. So this is another bridge. And here you can see again the mountains with the trees. Here we have a bridge crossing a highway. So there's a highway. Who needs a highway? Humans. We need to move goods all the time. We like to travel. Perfect. However, when you put a highway like this, animals on that side of the road cannot really cross on the other side without being hurt uh, because there's some fences. So what humans have done, they have created bridges, not for humans, but for animals to be able to cross from one side to the other so that we can think of the biology, the, the smaller animals, the larger animals, so they can cross so that it's a way for us to think of hum of uh, animals, while as humans, we keep our highways. So here, the, the biological sections are good. There was another example here in Montana, and same thing. So here we have a bridge that is going across a highway to make sure that animals can cross and organisms are good. But if you think, we think of animals, not to get hurt on the highways because of the fences, but also for humans not being hurt while being in an accident. So this was the second word I wanted to share here. So the third word is the following. We have ecocentrism. So for ecocentrism, that's a bit tricky because here you need to think of what? We have humans, but humans on the planet, the amazing thing is that we are growing in population. We have more than 8 billion people on the planet. So billion people like this, very nice. As humans, we need food. We need a place to stay, we need space, we need lodging. And then we create waste as well. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, some of you says, well, let's see if we can manage the waste as much as we can to make sure that humans and animals, animal kingdom and plants work well. But here, if we only think about the biosphere, the humans and living organisms, we're forgetting something very important. We're forgetting what is supporting all of that. In order to support uh, the biosphere, so here we can call it the biosphere. In order to support the biosphere, we need a few things. 
we need to maintain the, eco the ecosystems working. So that means that we need to think of the hydrosphere as well. So we need to think about our lakes, rivers, creeks. We need to think of our ocean, making sure that we can keep them so that biosphere can live. We have aquatic, uh, we have aquatic ecosystems everywhere. The next one is the lithosphere. The lithosphere is about this whole idea that if we have farms, we have the soil, we also have mountains, the geography to support a place where we can grow food and have a space for us. The lithosphere is important because it supports all the terrestrial ecosystems. So we have to be mindful of that. And the third one here is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is making sure that we have air that is not polluted so that we can have the plants and the humans be able to live without or while diminishing pollution. Because if you focus on anthropocentrism only, and then you include, I don't know, capitalism in the, in the, uh, in the game, then you end up with people wanting money without thinking of the environment that is supporting us completely. So here, as we go along, we need to look at how we can evolve. I like a little analogy. You could say that when people are born, you like little babies, you cry. If you cry, you get food. If you cry, you get the, uh, your diaper change. If you cry, someone takes care of you. This is anthropocentrism. When you grow older, you notice that you are you're two, three, four, five years old, then you discover your environment. You discover that you're not alone. You're a human within a place where there are other organisms. We can play with gardens, we have butterflies, we have uh, pets. We also are interested in current um, organisms like a farm animal, dinosaurs for some, but we're always focusing here on living organisms. But as you grow and you get a better understanding of who we are as humans, of living organism, but that we also have to take care of hydrosphere, lithosphere, and the atmosphere, then you end up with uh, I mean, uh, a thinking pattern, a mindset where ecocentrism may be important. Because keep in mind that we need to keep those 8 billion people as nice as possible, as healthy as possible, and being able to enjoy what we can to enjoy life. And these are the three words I wanted to talk. And I've talked about these three words in my class of environmental science, and it was kind of fun to talk about. So on this, if you have any clarification questions or you have any questions about science, put them in the comments below. I use your comments for different to find ideas for shows and also for videos on my channel. On this, I'm gonna put here a link to another scientific uh, science-related video and I'll see you there for more learning.